Hey guys, welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we talked about a lot of stuff regarding URLs view. But now it is time to talk about templates. So as you know, we have divided our project into different section. Each section is referred as app. Now each app that is each section will have its own template. So if I talk about the task page, it will have a different look. If I talk about our home page, it will have a different look. And if I talk about our daily diary page, it will have a different look. So the first thing I need to talk about is how to get started. So at this point of time, I'm just returning a HTTP response here. So I want to render a template page for that. I need to create a HTML page first. So just create a new folder called as templates. And remember it will always be called as templates because it is a Django structure as I have talked about. And as we follow along with the course, you will realize that what name is important and what is not like this will always be called as admin. This will call as apps. So this folder will be called as template. And here I need to create three folders. First will be CSS. Second will be JavaScript. Third would be images. And then the fourth will be, uh, we can create all the HTML files. So let me create it. Uh, we are not going to add anything. It is just a method to explain you about the importance of template and the folder structure. Now let me create a HTML file on which we will be rendering this. So let me create a HTML file and I would call it as task.html or I can call it as to do list.html, whatever I want. So this looks fine. Here I am doing just a small thing. I would be using h1 tag and write a welcome message. This looks fine. Now we have a HTML page here, which is called as to do list. We can call it as task or whatever we want. So this is our template folder inside our app. Now here I need to change my response. So instead of HTTP response, I would be trying to render my template. So I would be using render and I need to pass my request and then my HTML page. And then if I need to send any content at currently, I'm just sending request as well as template and my content would be empty. So content would always be access in the form of dictionary. Let us keep it empty for now and understand our template part. So this looks fine. Now we have changed this one. Let me run my server and check my task page. Yeah, this worked fine. And if I open my template again, check my HTML page and change something here. Save this one, come back here and refresh. You would see it's working fine. So now I am able to connect with my templates as well as my HTML page. Now think it as a project way. Now each app will have certain files that is related to them only. Like if I talk about these files, these are related to only this particular app. I have talked about templates. This is related to this particular app. Now in future, if we create more apps, we need to perform similar step. We need to create a template folder for that particular app. Now here is a catch. There would be some common files, common files like there would be some common images. There would be some common structure. So if I talk about amazon.com, you would see there is some common structure. Even if there are different application, like if I open the gift card section, if I open the seller section, you would see there is a common header, which is common for all. So there are different application, but this header is common. You would also realize the same with footer. So on the all three different apps of Amazon, there is something common, which is called as common templates, the common files. So Amazon logo would be common on all application. Even if I open amazon.com, it's seller page, it's login page, everything. This is the common part. So we have to create a common folder in the main directory and rest. Everything will be inside our app directories. So if there is some template for this particular app, it is going to be inside this, but there will be a common folder in which we'll be keeping the different common items. I hope till now everything is clear. We are moving with a great pace with lot of knowledge and I hope you are able to consume everything. In the next lecture, let us talk. Hey guys, welcome back. And at currently we are at an interesting point for our project. Now we have to start working on the template. So we need to work with HTML and CSS. As I talked before, we are the backend guys. That means Django is something that handles the backend. 
and this is related to something about front end but as a developer as a web developer or as a back end developer you need to have certain knowledge about css html and javascript not a expert but you should have certain knowledge and for that certain knowledge we will be working towards this template that is our to do list template now the first thing i need to do is i need to start with bootstrap all you have to do is just create a basic design in your mind and then we are going to complete that so this is our current website now i have a basic thing in my mind that we will have a header and then a logo or the name of our app at the side then we will have certain links of different app or different section of our website just visit this website getbootstrap.com if you are already familiar with css html you are good to go you just need to watch this section you will understand everything in very simple manner the second thing is just click on the documentation and you will be redirected towards the introduction i would say just go through this introduction it is quite easy and you will understand a lot of thing for now just copy this starter template and paste on our page now this starter template contains some javascript as well as css and it also contain our body section as well as our title so at currently our this is our body section this is our title and we are doing nothing good now if you visit the main home page of bootstrap you will understand about the title thing so if i am on to introduction part they have a title regarding introduction and then the site name so we have to do something similar so let me save this one and refresh my page you can see now we have a different font style as well as a different title so let me fix this small thing so title should be related something to to do list and then our site name so i would be using taskmate let me also change some content inside my body so that would be quite useful once that is done let me refresh my page again yeah the title looks better now now we have to do a lot more thing firstly we need to talk about how to get this header so just move on to bootstrap just visit this component part and inside that you will get navigation bar so just scroll down a bit and you will get a navigation bar and this is what i require at this point of time so you can see the sample this is the nav bar that is currently available let me check out a different one yeah this one looks fine so all you have to do is just copy this one and paste it here let me refresh this one now this looks fine uh, i have to do one small thing let me get this inside container so what you have to do is just go into this layout setting so the container help us to set layout all i have to do is create a div class and inside that add this one so all i have to do is create a div bar with class container and then keep all the content inside that this look fine let me refresh this one again now our page will be in proper format of margin according to our bootstrap the next thing is i need to talk about these links and also editing this so in the next lecture we'll be talking about jinja 2 as well as base template and this is going to be super important regarding templates so see you in the next one in which we'll be talking about jinja 2 as well as base extend hey guys welcome back now in this lecture we are going to complete two important things that is our jinja 2 which we have already started doing and expanding of template or playing with templates so we'll be creating a base template and we'll be using different pages in which we'll be extending that template it is actually called as template inheritance okay that's fine but the important part is you need to understand about how we extend different templates the first thing i am going to do is i am going to create multiple html pages so i can extend that is i can inherit different content on different pages so what i am going to do is so in my templates i am going to add a contact us html page and also a about us dot html so these two will be dummy pages i am just adding them so i can talk about different concepts i will also replicate content from to do list and the next thing is i will change this title
this looks fine to me so we have our HTML ready I also need to add my URLs as well as view what I am going to do is I am going to use contact the second one I would be using as about this looks fine remember these two are dummy I am just trying to show you some concept and how things are going to work with Jinja as well as our templating now I need to add views for both of them let me copy paste them and here I will change the text as welcome to to do list welcome to contact page welcome to about page this looks fine now we have three links we have three views and we have three different pages okay let me run my server Hey, you can see we haven't got any error but if I jump onto my website now this is to-do list working fine let me open my contact this works fine let me also open my about us this also work fine but uh, what if I need to edit this link I need to do them on all the pages but this is the same content why I'm doing on all the pages there should be some method by which I can create a base file store every common task there and here I just need to keep the unique content which is this on all three pages everything is common just this line is different why not create a single base file here even if I need to edit something here I need to do on all three files and that's the important part I was talking about here I need to add a new link for about us I have to replicate this line on all three pages which is a lengthy manual task and if you think of big application this is currently just a three pages we are talking about think about Amazon think about some 10 20 50 100 page application this type of manual task is actually lengthy so what we are going to do is we are going to create a base template for that we will be creating a template folder in our project file that is our root project at currently this template folder belongs to our to-do list app but we will be creating a new template file inside our base folder called as templates inside that we will be storing all the common html file images css and javascript so just create a new folder called templates and this is going to store all the base html file from which we can just inherit this common content so let me create a base.html here now what I can do is I can just copy this common content here and if I need to edit something I would be editing in this base.html and these three will just inherit that change and that would be fine for me. Before that we also need to do one small change. You have to visit the settings file and inside this setting file we need to give the directory of our template folder that is this template folder which is our main base folder. So I was searching about this and I got result from stack overflow my main motive was to bring out the uses of stack overflow so if at any point of time you feel that you are not able to achieve something that you have some problem or you are trying to do something innovative with the project make sure you search some queries some errors and questions on stack overflow it is a good habit for you to follow stack overflow on a regular basis it actually sharpen up your skill now all I have to do is just copy this one and paste it here. It's nothing different. They are just giving the base directory and talking about the folder name. So which is templates which we have already mentioned. Save this one. That's done for our settings.py. Now what I need to do is I just need to take common content and paste it here. And I need to extend my base.html here. So just use this command curly braces percentage symbol and use command as extends and then the file name and once you have this simple habit you can just use extend directly and our Django extension will auto complete that here you just need to give base.html now this looks fine and if I go to my to do list task manager and it's working fine here you see I have a mistake with manager let me fix here. let me refresh this one yep done 
now let us talk about the second part of the game so here if i import my base.html inside my contact page also this is going to remain same for contact page also for my about us page so how i need to solve this problem this can be done with our jinja as i talked about at the earlier stage jinja help us to use python commands in html so here whenever you have something unique or something different from your common file you can replace this with the jinja so just delete this because this will be title will be different for all the pages you just need to delete it from the base file because it is not common and here you need to add jinja block so what is jinja block so i would be using a block called title just give a name title now this block indicates that on base.html there will be some content from these three pages which is named as title and if i want to insert something between these block all i have to do is just mention that content here so i just need to mention block title here now between this block title everything i am going to write will be replaced here so just write me a title for this particular html page so that would be to do list manager now i need to replicate same for my contact us and about us this looks fine let me refresh this one you can see this is change and if i open my about us page that worked fine and if i open my contact us page yeah this worked fine too now let me fix these url because if i go here this worked fine but if i now go to my contact us it is going to give me error or if i change any link i need to replicate them on my base file so for that we can use jinja remember on our url section we gave a name to each url this url name is really important as i said earlier now let us use our jinja here so all you have to do is just remove this one just use url and then mention the name of that particular url and the name is to do list i also need to repeat the same for contact us page and same will be followed with about us now the problem is sorted we don't have to worry much it is dynamic every time we have to change anything it would be directly with our urls and views uh, let me refresh this one go to my about go to my contact us go to my to do list that worked fine and if i change anything here maybe i change it from about to about us i don't have to change on base.html because it is dependent on this name so now the link is changed but we don't have to worry so if i just refresh this one so if i go to my about us now you see it's working fine and we don't have to worry because this is dependent on this particular name so that's how our templating inheritance work that's how our jinja works and it is really important for us to understand now the second thing is body will be different for all the pages for that we will be using another block of code so here we will be creating a block called content so all you have to do is create a block and that would solve lot of problem so just copy this block and mention the content of this block into different html pages here let me use my content which is welcome text copy this on every page earlier we were not getting any error with our welcome text because on views we have mentioned this but it is not going to be same on contact we might have different key and value pairs on about us we might have different key and value pair so this is going to give error if i change my view now so if i refresh this one you can see i am not able to print anything here because welcome text not exist for our about us page and if i go to my to do list app this is working fine so i have to fix this one that is the reason i use content block now it would be fine if i use contact text here and about text here 
this looks fine let me run this one go to my contact us page about us page yeah that's fine so we have three pages in our template now also we have a base template and we have used Jinja 2 properly in our application so we are going good with our project that's done for our first half that means we are ready with our base and now we can tackle Django very well the next thing we have to do is let us start building our application properly with databases we will be talking about models databases ORM and a lot more thing because we have cleared one good small path which is accepting requests URL mapping controlling views controlling templates and working with the flow that's all for this video in the next video let us talk about models and databases thank you for following this lecture see you in the next one hey guys welcome back now before moving forward to our models migration databases as well as admin section we need to talk about something really important so we will be talking about two points in this lecture the first one will be our static folder which contain our css javascript as well as images the second will be our current website look so if you look at our website currently i want this to be a more attractive one so we'll be doing small changes what i'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular navigation bar. I was surfing throughout the bootstrap and thought this would be a nice look. So we'll be changing our navigation bar. And the second thing is we'll be using static folder. So earlier I talked about templates. I talked about all the HTML files, but here we'll be using a separate static folder. I'm going to delete these three folder that is our CSS images and JavaScript here. And I will be creating a different static folder and inside that static folder i am going to store my css images and javascript why because it is a good practice and i thought this is the right lecture to talk about this to use any static file we need to mention that in our settings folder we will be doing that in a minute but before that we need to talk about what we are going to change in this page so we will be changing our theme from light to dark and the second one is i am going to use a logo for that we will be using a static image that's where we need our static folder i hope you got that point so at first just open your base.html and change your theme from light to dark all you have to do is change your light term to your dark term let me check this one this looks fine and now i need to use a image here before that i need to get a logo and i have already created that i would be adding that in the resource section and now i need to store that logo in our directory so for that i need to create a directory so let me close all these and create a static folder on your root directory remember your root directory which we have followed for template once your static folder is created now create all the three folders your javascript your css and images because all the files which we contain in these three folders would be considered as static files once that is done now you need to register the static folder in the sense you need to tell our django project in the settings file that this is my static folder this folder is going to store all my static files all you have to do is just go to your project folder go inside the setting and at the last you just need to mention the directory all you have to do is just mention the directory your static files underscore dirs that is your directory and then you have to pass a list and inside the list you have to provide your particular directory name we have followed the same while our template folder so all you have to do is use your os.path.join and then your base directory and then the folder name in which you are storing your static file remember if you are storing your static file inside templates just mention template here if you are using a different folder that is static folder just mention static folder different programming teams follows different culture so some teams follows all the file inside template folder and some teams divide into two parts that is all the html files inside template and all the images css and javascript inside our static folder so you'll be following that so all you have to do is just mention this and save your file that's done now one thing i need to do is i just need to delete these three folder this looks fine now i need to add my image that is my logo for my website inside my image folder 
so i need to get a logo for this let me copy my logo inside that folder that's done now you can see that we have our logo now this looks fine the next thing i need to do is i need to change my base.html so i need to remove my website name and add a image tag here that is img and then i need to pass my image name so just use your img tag and here i need to pass my image link for that we just directly need to use our jinja command all you have to do is just use your curly braces percentage static and then inside that we need to pass our images slash and then the image name that is our logo.png once that is done let me check our website so we got an error because we forgot to load our static so what is this load means so whenever we are going to use this static command any time in our html file we need to mention static load at the top of our file so all you have to do is just use load that is this command and we are good to go let me refresh this one yeah this looks fine so now we have our website logo and all our links are working let me do one small change also let me use my to do list link for our home currently later we will be changing that so i hope now you understand about the static folder so all you have to do is just create a static folder in the root directory create three folders that is css images javascript then register this folder into settings.py once that is done just go to your base directory mention the static tag wherever you want to use your css javascript or images and then also don't forget to mention your load command so this would be fine and now you are able to use any static file with your project i hope this lecture was helpful see you in the next one